Okay, welcome to the Let, Let's Enjoy Piano Self-Expression Method. A, a nice toolbox of ideas that you can pull on to what you need to know to get the job done. If you have the book, we're going to look at page 18 for uh, fingering triads. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 5, 1, 2, 4, depending on the situation. Uh, octave chords at the bottom of uh, page 18, so you can look at the visualization of the octave chord. And page 61, which goes through matched chords, extension chords, plurality, the basic idea of um, putting a different chord in each hand. So we'll work on that. This, we're going to use Here, There, and Everywhere, a great tune by the Beatles. Here's the lead sheet. And uh, that's all you need in a lead sheet. You just need your chord and you need your melody note and it outlines the chords accordingly. It starts out with a G second inversion, which is usually fingered one, three, five. That's the harmonic position linearly. Uh, when you play one note at a time, you could finger it that way or it's heading towards a D. Which the second chord is a B minor octave chord, second first inversion octave chord, or second inversion uh, triad. So the fingering is a personal matter, but if you want to look at um, uh, playing, getting ready for the next melody note, you would play one, two, three, five, and that's a second inversion of a G octave. So you have the option of playing the G root, a uh, G f a second inversion into a second inversion B minor. So it's this way, yeah. And then you can go into a B flat, hit the chord, there's a rest there, so hit the chord in root position, and then go up the B flat octave, second inversion. There's a second inversion, so you can Again, finger it one, three, five, or move into your fruit position uh, triad. So you can either go or whatever's easiest. But that's uh, the positioning of the introduction of um, here, there, and everywhere. So you have G two into B minor octave second inver first inversion or second inversion into a B flat octave second inversion or a first inversion or second inversion a triad into a root position and then we get into an extension chord a minor where D is the melody you could play it that way a minor but you can treat it as a fourth which would be or you can treat it as an 11 in other words eight this is a, a root but it's also an eight so this is the nine ten eleven and on page 61 or in any case, when you have an 11 as a melody, you put a minor uh, 7 off the 5th. The chord is A minor. Here's A, C, E. That's the 5th of A. So we build a minor 7 off the 5th. And lo and behold, there's your D. Or you could do it this way. It's a little more dissonant. So, so far we have G2 into B minor 2 into B flat 2 into B flat root into A minor 11 and then into a D7 which is D major plus the 7 one step away from the octave is the 7 so there's my positioning And then it's a matter of wiggling. When you have a, a rest at the beginning, state the chord. And then we 
we start G1. The melody is G, therefore it, nothing can be higher than the melody. When you have a root in the melody, in other words, when the chord symbol matches the note, you're in first inversion. And fingering is so important. Again, you can look at page 29A if you have the book. If you don't, go to the website and pick up a copy. Uh, we, I give online lessons too. Look me up on onla online, online lessons and I can help you uh, expedite your progress by thinking positioning. That's the whole key here. And now we have A minor 1. There's no chord, but I'm going to keep the sound uh, like the G1. And now I notice the next chord is B minor, and the three notes are B, D, and A. So it happens to be B minor 7 without the F sharp. So we can add that in the left hand if you want to. Into a half a C. And melody will be 80, 70 to 80 percent chord tones. You can see it was 100 percent at the beginning, all chord tones. That's the only non chord tone in the whole first line. And now, your chord tone, all chord tones. So if you know your chords, you're going to be right on the notes whether you like it or not. C into a G root, since the melody is D. Now A minor 1, that's arbitrary, there's no lyric there, so you can put whatever you want to. And now B minor, B minor second inversion, because you have the notes B, D, B, C, D, and when the, the D is the melody, second inversion. Uh, if you're a little more advanced in the book, on page 44a is the formulas, third melody, second inversion. When the third's the melody, second inversion. When the root's the melody, it's first inversion. And when the fifth's the melody, root position. So this is a 5RP, fifth's the melody, root position. The G1, root's the melody, first inversion, R1. And a 3-2 was, was the second inversion. When the third's the melody, When the fifth the melody is root position. So you have a 3 2. Third's the melody, second inversion. Root position is the melody 5, 5 RP, and R1 when the root's the melody. The root's the melody's gonna always be the composer's going to either pick a root, third, or a fifth as their melody note. So here, Paul McCartney used the, uh, a um, root as the melody. And then where are we? B minor 7. And there was a uh, fifth. Here was a third. Here was a root and a seven. And now in this part, From a second inversion, B minor. Now, here's the next extension chord. We have the A minor 7 uh, with the E minor. The fourth being the melody or the 11. The fourth is the. Uh, there's a chart at the top of 61 that explains that. Fourth is the same as the 11. And what do we have here? We have a F sharp chord with a B melody. That's the fourth. Take my word for it, or the 11th. So we put a minor 7 off the 5th of F sharp minor, F sharp, A, C sharp, and the 5th is C sharp. You have to obviously know your chords, I'm assuming you know that. F sharp minor, root 3rd, 5th, build a C sharp minor 7 off the 5th. And then the next chord is B1. And your thumb doesn't, your pinky doesn't move on off the B. B1, first inversion of B1 is D sharp, F sharp, B. So we have put 
it's in a uh, C natural, well, for the F sharp, that's really interesting. And that's McCartney. And then E minor, very straightforward. Three, four, five, right up the E minor chord. And our last extension chord is a, an A13, which is in a major seven off the seven. Here's A, A major, here's the seven, root, third, fifth, seven. And here is, you make a major seven off the seven, which is G major seven. G, B, D, F sharp. Lo and behold, that's the note we need, F sharp. That there's some and A minor one. So that's a that's a pretty neat part. And we're back home again. Okay, so let's review that real quick and that should get you started on great one of the greatest melodies ballads I think ever written uh, here there and everywhere so it's A minor 1 B minor 7 a half a C G root A minor 1 B minor 2nd inversion C 2nd inversion extension chord C sharp minor B1 E minor, 3, 4, 5, A, 13, A minor, 1, D7. Etc. So that should help you. It takes a little time to get organized, but the more you know your chords and you can flip them around, but learn them in the context of the song. You don't have to know every chord and every key. All you need to know these chords in the key of G and he modulates into the key of E with the F sharp minor and B, so there's a modulation there, but just learn the chords you need to know. And it's a beautiful song. It's well worth the effort and have a good time. That's the main thing. Let's enjoy piano. That's the whole idea. And if you have any questions, write me at email at Let's Enjoy Piano. And I hope that helps you out, and I'll see you next time around. Thank you very much.